Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. Been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals. I go out and I go get it. How to code, that's all I know. I don't succeed, then I don't breathe. Success, what does it mean? If I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles, compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles, go take care of your business. Success Chronicles, it's deeper than just winning. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another topic session um, today. And we have Coach Richard Barron with us, a great man. Uh, and today we're going to hit on the topic of experiences allow us to grow. And um, I had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Coach Barron. And, and I, was, I was greatly impressed by some of the experiences that he's been blessed and fortunate to have in his life. And I know that you know, through those experiences, um, it's allowed him to grow. It's allowed him to be around people to help them to grow and give them opportunities. I just wanted to kind of just expand more on it uh, so that you guys as the audience can kind of hear some of the background and hear some of the great experiences that he's had. And, you know, we just have a good convo here talking about experiences and, and our growth. So first coach, thanks so much again for, for hopping on with me and, and let's get in deep. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. I, I, I've told you this off air before, but uh yeah, you know, I'm so impressed with you and what you're doing. And, you know, uh, you've got such a warm personality. It's so easy to talk to. I think I, I, I think people would just spill their guts to you. You've got, you've got some of that Oprah vibe, you know. You're going to have me crying here in a minute, I'm sure. So uh, nice. I, look, I always look forward to our conversations. Yes, sir. Well, let's dive into it. You know, like I said, the experiences allow us to grow. Uh, what, are, what, is, what are some points that you have on experiences? I know, like I said, um, Man, you've you've achieved some really neat things. Uh, been on some really cool staffs. Um, you know, uh, allowed some things to happen as far as in your staff that are you know put people in position to be pioneers at what they do. Uh, yeah. You know, and so it's, I think it's a blessing to so many. But if you don't mind elaborating more on some of your experiences, well, I you know one of the first things that comes to mind is. Um, Going back to when when I was in school, I I, I really enjoyed the the small school liberal arts experience, yeah. and we talked a little bit about that before, and and so the chance to to do a lot of different things, and I think there's a lot of studies now that are really kind of coming out how about how late bloomers, you know, people who dabble, people who yeah. experiment and things, really. Um, that they're more likely to have the success than the, maybe the Tiger Woods, who's the prodigy and, you know, brought up doing just one thing sort of, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I think about all the different experiences I had. One of them was I spent a semester studying marine biology um, through a, a great program called Sea Education Association, SEA. It's out of Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is uh, kind of the, the focal point for marine biology on the East Coast. Um, and a lot of research institutions there. And so we, we, there was a land component and then a sea component. We actually st sailed a 122-foot stasel schooner wow. through the you know, Bahamas and um, up through the Atlantic Ocean to Bermuda and into New York Harbor. And you know, the whole time we're doing research, sailing the boat. And, you know, um, and, and so those sort of experiences, life experiences. When I was 14, I was, um, I was a, a Senate page. Um, and, for uh, the U S Senate. And so I lived in Washington DC in the page dorm in the house office building, you know, and, and walked to the U S Senate every morning to, to work. And then I would go down to, um, I don't know if it's still there, but Heinz uh, junior high was where, where everybody played outdoor ball, which is probably about, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a mile or two from, from the Capitol down, down the street, real close to the library of Congress. And, wow. and, and that's where I went and played pickup every evening. And then I had to be back in the dorm by curfew and all that. And, and but that, you know, being almost my son's, our son's age, right? They're 13. Mm -hmm. I just can't believe that, you know, when I was that age, I was living in D.C., you know, and on my own. Right. And, uh, and so that, but those were great experiences for me. And it really helped me grow up. One in particular was, was when I was with that group, C Education Association. Uh, we were all college students. A lot of us were, were you know, 
in our early 20s. I was 21 uh, then, and and one of our friends turned 21, and and um, we had a party for him. And uh, like a lot of college students, too much alcohol was involved, and um, he decided he wanted to try to drink 21 shots. And I had had some training in um, um, you know first responder. Uh, training and I was had been a lifeguard and and uh, so um, at one point uh, he passed out and and I was very concerned and and I was monitoring his pulse and I finally called nine one one and um, and my friends turned on me because they were going to get in trouble for having a party on you know on mm-hmm. the camp and, um, and the you know, police came and the ambulance came fire rescue and and uh, so I. He was taken to the hospital. My friends were furious with me. I was completely ostracized. I got on my bike in the freezing cold, right? And I rode, I pedaled, I don't know how, 10, 15 miles to the hospital. Got there. And the doctor, when I came into the emergency room looking to you know, see how, about how my friend was doing, the doctor ripped into me, just yelled at me. You know, how could you let your friend do this? How could, you know, Mm -hmm. he's going to be lucky if he lives. He had had his stomach pumped. And well, I called my parents that night, you know, three in the morning, whatever time it was, just in tears. You know, I was 21 years old. I I was broken. You know, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought, you know, and here I'm, I'm getting, getting it from all sides. Right. And that was such a humbling experience, but it saved his life. Mm. And, and we, you know, it was, you know, a couple of years later on his birthday, he found me and he thanked me and he said, I have this birthday because of you. And so, you know, you, you doing the, there's never the wrong time to do the right thing, you know, paraphrasing Martin Luther King. And even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, yeah. especially when it's hard. And I don't always do that. I haven't always done that. Sometimes I've given in to doing the wrong thing. <laughs> um, sometimes I've done it out of spite. Sometimes I've done the wrong thing because I've, I'm ignorant, you know, yeah. but, um, but when you do the right thing, it always comes back to, to pay off. And, and so um, those are the kind of experiences that I think shape me as a person and I hope make me a better coach. Uh, I agree. I think uh, like he says, always the right time to do the right thing. And um, I think if you can mm-hmm. live a life where you're doing the right thing in every moment, like those baby steps, I think it adds up to big things because you're, you've been consistent about doing the right thing in those little moments. Yeah. And the big things to take care of themselves for sure. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. So uh, I have a a couple that I wanted to, um, you know, a couple of things I wanted to share, elaborate on as far as experiences. I think for me, first off, you know, I I don't remember where I heard this quote from, but it said, uh, don't chase money, chase experiences. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, when you live a life where you're not, and of course you need money to live and all of those things and take care of what you have to take care of. But I think within that, if you're, you're seeking to have genuine, intentional, uh, wholehearted, good hearted experiences, then I, I, I hope I feel that everything else will take care of itself. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you do those things, um, great things just seem to happen for you. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, what's the the um, the quote? Uh, the two most important days are the day you're born and the day you figure it out why. Mm, yes. You know? um, so yeah, if you can find if you can find something you love that you're passionate about and you get paid for, then you never work a day in your life. So true. So true. Yeah. And then and then the second point, I think it's important to to have a growth mindset. Uh, you know, we always have to put ourselves in position to where. Uh, we're we're comfortable with being uncomfortable, if you will, right? You know, yeah. just like just like the athlete, you know, you you're used to being sore all the time because you're always working out. But then when you have that feeling of, okay, wait a minute, I'm not sore. <laughs> like this is not good. I got to go to work. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, well, think about how boring life would be if you were done already. Mm. You know, I mean, like I, I'm. I'm still getting better. I, I know I got a long way to go. I'm far from far from done. You know, God, please don't take me now. I got a lot, like a lot more to do. I got a lot more to work on, and um, so yeah, I I, I see a, 
you know, life is a gift. It's a, yes. it's a journey. And so um, there's so many great experiences. The people I work with on a daily basis, the people, the players, uh, you know, we, there, there are times when I'm disappointed because someone doesn't box out, you know, um, yeah. but, you know, or I'm, I'm, I'm angry because we didn't touch the lines on a sprint, whatever it is. You know, I mean, we, we all have those sort of things, but, but it's, that's, that's so fleeting. Like that's not, I, I never remember that sort of stuff the next day, you know, like the, what I, what I always remember is the feeling of being around a great group of, of men or women, as, you know, having coached and worked with both. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just sharing those experiences, you know, uh, and, and some of my, you know, some of my best friends are people that, uh, you know, it's those shared experiences that, that make us so close. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I think too, if you can elaborate a little bit more, um, and I know this from, from talking with you before, but if you can just tell the audience, like, like your, your background with your family and, you know, kind of how, you know, yeah. what they were involved in so that people can understand like how you, how you have become to be the type of person you are. Yeah. I, you know, my, it, it's, it's interesting that, you know, my, my father, grandfather was a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, my father was born in Columbia, South Carolina. He was the second of four children and um, they moved to Georgia and, and then from Georgia to Alabama. And he went to high school in Ufall, Alabama. And uh, my mother lived in Clayton, Alabama, the same county, uh, about 30 miles away. And uh, Clayton County, Clayton, Barber County is, you know, a lot of people know it because George Wallace was from oh. there. And George Wallace's daughter was actually one of my mother's good friends. Wow. And my, my, my maternal grandfather um, owned a hardware store and, and some timber land that's, that's still in our family and, and worked that land and, and sold hardware. And, and you know, the, that whole time is, is almost surreal to me because my parents never raised me to see color or to, yeah. you know, discriminate. And, um, and my mother, you know, certainly grew up right there. And, and, and according to, you know, her memories, and, and of course, this, she was a little bit younger then, but um, she remembers the, her experiences with Governor Wallace as being pleasant. He was very nice to her, of course. Right. But she does remember very specifically that, that, that and I think it was, uh, you know, whether it was an argument between them or just in general, that my grandfather did not mind people of color coming through the front door. That was not, but that was a social problem for him. Like he, his, his friends thought that was that they, everyone needed to walk through the back. And I thought that it's just a, you know, to today that just blows my mind. It's even hard. Yeah. I, I get, I, I get red thinking about it. My blood boils thinking about it, but I'm only a generation removed from, from that. And so I grew up, I was born in Florida. Uh, we had moved there. My father, um, went to seminary at, at Columbia Seminary in Atlanta and um, then started uh, preaching in, in Florida. And so uh, my experience growing up was, you know, I was, I was born during the civil rights movement, but I, you know, my, my sort of emotional maturity was a little bit post civil rights. So I, I didn't, I remember bits and pieces of things. I remember things like uh, Nixon's resignation. I remember the, you know, kind of the, you know, the Vietnam war kind of, you know, kind of ending and, and, and that sort of thing. But I didn't grow up with a real sense of racial discrimination because most of the time that I spent with people that were black, mostly black, not very few other minorities, but were through sports and, you know, FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And so, you know, Christ was the center of all that and sports was second. And not, so not, not it, any of that other stuff. Yeah, it just wasn't yep. there. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was good for me. Maybe yes. that insulated me and gave me a sense of, you know, that people are people and they're all, we're all God's children. And, and so that was that, that, you know, um, you know, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. I mean, that's that's what I was brought up on. Red and yellow, um, black and white. They are precious yeah, in his sight. Precious in his sight. And yep. so I, I remember 
um, a fight when I was in school, probably I was about, uh, I think fourth grade, mm-hmm. maybe it was, maybe it was third, but someone used the N word on the playground and there was a fight. And I remember going home and just being confused and having to ask about that. Um, and so I wonder now as a parent, you know, how do, how, you know, teaching our children and what do you say and how quickly do you teach them? Because I want them to have the innocence of youth. I don't want right. to, you know, um, to rob them of their childhood um, with terrible things that adults say. But I also worry, you know, what have they heard? Where do they see it? And now it's not just the playground. It's social media. It's and it's so many different <laughs> platforms. I mean, I, I, I use Twitter and I, I try to stay off it most of the day, you know, but occasionally I'm on Twitter and, and I have an Instagram account that I rarely check in on a Facebook um, because I'm older. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so I have Facebook, but you know, there's the, the TikTok and the Snapchat and all that stuff. I mean, it's just, you know, my, my kids see so much stuff and I can't, right. I can't police all of that. You know, I can't, so I, I, sometimes I worry about that, but I think back to my experiences and I know that, I, I know that the, the the real experience is the interaction that I had with people who were different with, from me and how much they helped me. Um, you know, part of that experience, part of, you know, um, my growth was really going off to college too. Yeah. You know, college is such a chance to, to learn. I had a, a gay um, uh, RA and that was my first interaction with someone who was openly homosexual. I'm sure that I'd known other homosexuals before that just, you know, but, but culturally um, it was a lot of people just weren't, weren't out. And, and he was, and I was just so horrible to him. Um, I was, you know, not ignorantly, but, but I was horrible to him. I was homophobic. I didn't, I, I didn't know what that meant. And I, um, and there were times when we had very, you know, warm and genuine, you know, conversations and, and just, and, you know, organic conversations, not, right. not, not about anything that have to do with sexuality. Um, but, but then there were times when I would talk about him behind his back and I would say things, I was just, you know, uh, I was 18 and I was really naive. And I remember kind of having that, that come to Jesus moment where I realized how wrong I was. And I, I talked to him about it. I had to go and apologize and just say, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how I feel about all this stuff. I'm still learning. And this was, you know, when I was, again, when I was 20. Um, but I know that the way I treated you was wrong. I know the things I felt were wrong. And that's about me. It has nothing to do with you. And I'm just so sorry that I put that on you. And, uh, and it was a great, you know, it was a great moment. Same, same sort of, you know, thing. It was just, you know, the, I, I, I went along with the crowd a little bit, you know, um, in athletics, I think that was probably one of the things that was typical of the time was a little bit of homophobia, maybe right. not a little, maybe a lot. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was, so that was a, a real time of growth. And, and the only reason I had that growth is because I had that interaction because I actually met someone, you know? Yeah. And, and so, um, I, I, I think about all the things that are going on in our country right now and, 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 all the different levels of discrimination and, and bias. And if we just had more interaction, if we just knew each other better and gosh, it just takes, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll prove my point right now and listen to you. It just takes, it just takes sometimes listening. So tell me what do you think about that and about your experiences? Yeah, I think um, I, I agree with the thing that you're saying. I think uh, the ability, uh, I think one of the reasons I feel really connected to you and your mission with what you have is because our backgrounds are similar, you know, as far as raised in faith based, uh, raised in, you know, we love all, you know, um, none of that other stuff matters, you know, team sports, uh, you know, all in together for a common goal, uh, you know, all, all of those things, you know, I've experienced as well. And, and I, and I truly agree with you on the, you know, let's just have a conversation about it and let's be open, you know, non-judgmental, non-biased, you know, these are the thoughts that I have, you know, what's your thoughts, you know, and then we come together for a common cause because at the end of the day, you know, that gay RA is still a person that, you know, has parents that love him 
or her Absolutely. or whoever it is, you know. And so we're still we're, we're we're all precious in the sight. And I think that if we can live a life to where um, we live a life that way, <laughs> then yeah. how much better would our world be? Yeah, no, a- absolutely. And, you know, I, I've had to learn, you know, I, I'm by nature, I, you know, I, I want to be, I don't know, if there's an argument, I want to win it, you know, um, <laughs> competitive. I, Right. Yeah. It's a little bit, I mean, I was the oldest child. I won't, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be wrong. I wanted to, you know, prove my case and, um, and, you know, that's something that, that, that I think is really important that I'm learning is that, you know, conversations don't have to be won. Right. You just, just listen. And there's so many people in my life that have planted seeds, you know, and it's that, you know, it's that aha moment may happen years later, even, right. um, you know, something that someone says that, you know, that, that seed's been planted and, and, uh, you know, it, it, it germinates and boom, all of a sudden yeah. you, you get it. And so, um, I, I hope that, that I share things in a positive way. I hope that, uh, that, you know, as a coach and as, as a father and a husband that, you know, I'm, I'm doing what God wants me to do. Um, but, I, I know that I'm still learning and I've got to learn. I've got to listen. You know, I, if you go into a classroom, you know, when I, when I went into organic chemistry with professor York at Kenyon college, I didn't start teaching the class. I didn't try to tell him, no, 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 no. That's not yeah. what, you know, yeah. well, you better not, listen. Exactly. I, you know, I needed to listen. I had a lot to learn. And, and it is, it is not just true in chemistry. It's true in every aspect of life. And, and, uh, and there's so many, so many great things. In addition to the fact that when you hear, you make other people feel good. When you listen, they feel good. They feel included. And so it is a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, that's like a, it, reminds, it makes me think of like a grandmaism. something that a grandma would say, you know, uh, they'll say, boy, you got, you got two ears and one mouth. You need to listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's some great, great expressions. That one reminds me yeah. of the, the reason why the, the, the windshield's this big, right? And, and the, the rear view yeah. is this big, yeah. you know? That's um, it. Yeah. That's it. So true. Well, coach, um, but before we get off, if you don't mind sharing with the audience where they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love. Yeah. Well, I mean, our, our website for our, our basketball team is go black mm-hmm. uh, My, my Twitter account is, uh, um, is it coach B U Maine? I think <laughs> yeah. I have, I'll have to look just to be sure, but, uh, um, yeah, coach B U Maine. <laughs> there you and, go. Uh, Maine with an E on the end. And, um, yeah, and you can find me on Facebook as well. And, uh, Instagram, I'm happy to, you know, have new followers and to follow other people. And, yes, sir. you know, and, and you can email me too, if there's anybody out there that I can help out, um, emailing. And, um, I've also got a really gracious staff and they're, they're very smart. Yes. Very you, you've, uh, you know, Adnisha Curry, she's yes. been on before. Um, and, uh, Kevin Reed, um, Igor Verzina, Matt Marshall, uh, they all do a great job and, and they're there as well. So you can find their emails on our website if, uh, if there's something that our program can do for anybody. Well, again, Coach, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time and doing the topic session with me. And uh, I wish you continued success in everything that you have going on, Coach. And, and back at you. And, and, and thanks for thanks for giving me the time. Um, I always love talking to you and, and you're welcome to call anytime. It doesn't even have to be a Zoom. We can uh, we can just top it chat up anytime. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for that. And thank you guys for checking out this episode. This topic session. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.